Hello everyone, today we have Paul Randall speaking for us. Paul Randall has spent nearly 30 years working with Credit Bureau, firstly as a lender, then using that experience to develop Credit Bureau and various value-added products that maximize Credit Bureau data. Initially working in banks and non-bank lenders as a risk manager creating automation for risk management processes. He then worked as a consultant supporting financial institutions worldwide to obtain the benefits of improved risk management processes. Nowadays, he has been working for Credit Info since 2007, supporting the network of Credit Bureau that is spread across Eastern Europe, Central Asia, Africa and the Caribbean. Today, he will provide us with some fascinating insights about the macro market impact of introducing a Credit Bureau into a market for the first time, what the impact will be on the lenders and markets as a whole. Enjoy the video and the presentation and thank you for listening. Hello everybody, thank you for joining us uh, this morning. When we have the introduction of a credit bureau, often we find that the financial institutions are a little bit slow actually to really benefit from the, from the credit bureau and the, the potential uh, improvements in, in defaults, in efficiency that a credit bureau can bring which is not good for the market as it slows the benefits the market will get in terms of access to credit. So today I want to really talk about how we believe that the financial institutions should really think about what's going to happen in the, in the market and actually try and anticipate the improvements that can be achieved through changes that they can make. So what I'm going to really focus on is you know, what are the changes that we expect in the market when a credit bureau is introduced and I'm going to run through from the introduction to perhaps five years later. Then I'm going to talk about a particular case study in Georgia. I'm also going to talk about how the specific lenders may see improvements and then think back to uh, financial institutions and think what actually they should be uh, trying to anticipate and plan for the changes in the credit bureau. So hopefully I'm going to take you through that uh, journey and so you can anticipate what will happen. So if we step into the future, so from now and move uh, five years future and imagine as financial institutions what are going to be the changes that are actually going to affect our market over that time since the introduction of the Credit Bureau. Before we, we, we fully go on that journey, what I want to think about is are, are there some businesses that have actually not anticipated changes in their market and really suffered as a result. And that, you know, I want to pick out some specific examples such as Kodak, such as Nokia, such as Blackberry, such as Blockbuster's video. In each of those cases there was a market change and because those companies didn't uh, react when digitalization of cameras came through and we saw that uh, Kodak didn't react, then they lost huge market share. When smartphones came in and Nokia and Blackberry didn't react, they lost a huge market share. So that's why I want to really give you as, as financial institutions the opportunity to now uh, know what's going to happen in the future, know how your market's going to change so you can actually anticipate and, cha and change and adapt your business. So you will not be the next Nokia, the next Blackberry, the next Kodak. So there are going to be four main changes that are actually going to happen to the market. We're going to see changes in the, the product range, changes in the volumes of loans, the competition, new market entrance, and that, the growth that we're going to see will not be even amongst the different market players. We'll see uneven growth. So let's look at that first area, the products and, and collateral. When I'm talking about products, I'm also talking about the difference between secured and unsecured uh, products. The graph shows, where the, uh, in relative terms, what are the default rates of different uh, products. In um, whether going from unsecured to where you might have a guarantor, where you might have usable assets, etc. And you can see by far the highest risk products are unsecured products. And specifically in terms of prior to the credit bureau entry. 
And that, why is that? And that, that is because we have, we're unable to know when we're looking at uh, individuals without a credit bureau who are the high risk and who are the low risk. It's very difficult to see. They all look the same. Whereas once we have a credit bureau, we can anticipate who are going to be the higher risk and who are going to be the lower risk. And even those that perhaps we don't have any previous history on the credit bureau, at least we know they have no negative history. So we can really uh, understand the, the applicants that are coming to our financial institution and make good judgment in terms of the risk. So then let's come back to our graph that we looked at before. And we can see once we have a credit bureau, actually the risk is much less on each of those products. And um, particularly, uh, it will affect all the products, but particularly on the um, unsecured, we see the greatest change from the previous default rates. And now we see some of those products that were previously unprofitable, if we imagine the black line is really for a realistic interest rate where the profitable uh, um, point could be, we start to see unsecured and guarantor loans which previously weren't profitable now become profitable. So in most markets where there exists no credit bureau, there is only uh, lending which is, is secured. Now, after a credit bureau, we can start to see unsecured lending will be feasible and profitable. So, my first prediction over the five years after credit bureau will be that unsecured lending actually becomes widespread and a profitable business to be in. So, in a market where there isn't a credit bureau, are there some individuals that don't have collateral that would actually like to let to borrow? Of course there are. There are million, generally millions of people who have, uh, would like to borrow who don't have collateral. And so there is a lot of, there's a huge market there for unsecured loans. So my second prediction is the volumes will really increase as those people who previously didn't have collateral and were unable to borrow can now have the opportunity to actually uh, borrow and then we see the volumes increase as uh, once the unsecured loans start becoming part and parcel of the uh, market. So that's two predictions. Third prediction is one that sometimes uh, is, is difficult for um, existing um, lenders to actually uh, hear about, which is the com competition and new entrants coming into the market, which is very important from a market perspective in terms of keeping interest rates down, giving greater access to credit for, for larger numbers of people. So there are some financial institutions that are very good at lending with a credit bureau. They understand how to use credit bureau data, they understand how to lend in an automated fashion. Now those uh, institutions, sometime after a credit bureau has become well placed and uh, settled in the market, will actually then see that market as one that they would be interested in. And so they will come into the market, they will use the credit bureau in a, in a very effective way and actually try to take a, you know, a market share. For those uh, existing players in the market, you know, they know the market, they understand the market, they have an existing uh, customer base, they have an existing um, name. So it's important for those existing markets, sorry, existing market players also to be able to understand how to use credit bureau. Because if they can then adapt and change their business practices to be able to use Credit Bureau, then they will still have the advantage over new players about having um, both their knowledge of the market and knowledge of Credit Bureau. So there will be new entrants uh, coming in and it's important that if you are an existing player that you learn how to use the Credit Bureau effectively because for sure those new entrants will be very effective and knowledgeable users of Credit Bureau. So that's prediction three. Coming to the fourth prediction, in general we see as greater access to credit, more different products, uh, more products uh, become available, we'll see most of the banks and the microfinance institutions will expand, have uh, more business However, there will be some institutions that actually grow at a faster pace than others. And they will be those uh, institutions who adapt to the new um, uh, ways of working, bring in automation, use credit bureau data effectively. 
So we will see that growth will be uneven. And those ones that will grow uh, quickest will be those that adapt to automation the fastest and most effectively. So my fourth prediction is that the growth uh, will be uneven amongst the different uh, market players. So I can imagine that a lot of people are sitting there and thinking, yeah, that's all very well. I can imagine that works in some markets. And that's my other superpower, is that actually I can you know, often anticipate in an audience that people will be thinking that. They'll think, yes, that has happened in some markets, but it won't happen in my market. It's different. We have different processes. We have different history. We have different culture. And so it's not going to happen here. But this is something that I've heard before. I've heard it uh, even going back to the, to the UK in the 1980s when the credit bureaus were seen as, a, as an American uh, invention and it, it wasn't believed that it would actually really change the market in the UK. It wasn't very, very popular and now it's very much uh, an integral part of the, the business life in, uh, in the UK. So also then in South Africa in the 1990s and then in very different cultures, different country, in different um, continents, in South Korea in the uh, early 2000s became and the credit bureaus now a very important part of the financial infrastructure. Then in Eastern Europe, in post-communist uh, areas, Ukraine, Georgia, very much uh, adapted to use credit bureaus and, uh, and even though initially it was thought that it wouldn't work in, in a post-Soviet environment. And now in uh, Egypt, in, in a number of uh, different uh, African countries, in Morocco we see credit bureaus very much becoming uh, an integral part of the, uh, the business life for financial services. So, even though there will, the change is different in each country, uh, the pace of uh, development may uh, differ, sometimes it may take 10 years to see some of the changes, sometimes it may happen more quickly, the four predictions that I've made will happen and they will affect all markets. So it's important that financial institutions understand that and really plan how they're going to adapt so they're not going to be the next Kodak. So let's have a look at uh, one of those countries that I've just mentioned, Georgia. Georgia is not the richest uh, country, very much uh, in the, the lower quarter of its uh, neighbouring uh, countries in terms of GDP. It's got a population of about four and a half, four and a half million, so a pretty uh, relatively small country. And the introduction of the credit bureau came ten, um, just over 10 years ago in um, 2005. We've moved to positive data in 2007. The credit bureau is jointly owned by a number of banks and the global credit bureau provider, Credit Info, and both a mixture of local and international banks. And we've seen that over the, uh, those 10 years that the um, Credit Info Georgia has, has, has been in place. One of the um, things that we have seen is a big growth, in the, particularly in the non-bank lenders. So on the uh, table we see that uh, in the last uh, five years we can see that the number of non-bank lenders has increased from 16 to 33, nearly doubled. We've seen an increase in the number of banks. And so we've seen uh, uh, financial institutions come in from the Baltic states, We've now seen a Chinese bank enter the market, so quite a, uh, a number of new competitors come in, which was uh, one of the predictions, uh, prediction three, that there would be uh, new competition to the uh, uh, historic uh, market players. The other thing that we've seen is that we've seen uh, huge growth in the, uh, in the markets, so overall the market's grown five times. However, the, on the consumer side, the loans uh, to individuals has grown seven and a half times. So we've seen that, that market growth uh, very much focused on the smaller loans. Then if we take uh, one, one institution as an example, Bank of Georgia, which was one of the banks that actually changed its processes, became much more automated, provided new products. And then we see that uh, they've had quite a massive change in the number of loans to individuals. So the number of loans to individuals has increased by 20 times, massive growth. And the, but the value of new loans has only increased by 11 times. 
So that means that the average loan has actually halved to individuals. So we've seen a new product range, unsecured loans coming into the market. We've also seen that market growth, which were two of the uh, predictions. So here in Georgia, we, we, we can see the way that actually those predictions uh, demonstrate themselves on the market. We've seen some banks uh, grow more quickly, but in general, we've seen a great increase in uh, the volumes and number of unsecured. And just to further illustrate the, the growth in the volumes of loans, we can see here the number of contracts on the credit bureau. This is a cumulative uh, basis. And we can see between 2014 and 2015, over 4 million um, contracts opened in a country, if you can remember, whose population is only 4.5 million. So a lot of short-term, small-value loans. And so that brings it, you know, further emphasizes that, that uh, second prediction of the increase in volumes. So that's Georgia, where we see each of those four predictions very much come true over a time period of five to ten years. And so we will see, once we introduce the Credit Bureau, the, those um, four predictions come true, I can assure you. And really, you know, the question is, which of the financial institutions in the market will actually be winners and losers. So let's look down at the institution level, what's really driving some of those changes. So we've got a couple of uh, real uh, cases from the, uh, the last, couple, uh, last few years where we've introduced uh, credit bureaus. And you know, we might, you, you know, you might, I might ask you what the, uh, the percentage uh, improvement and reduction in default rate may be in a, in a market. And uh, you know, what could it be? 2%, 3%, 10% reduction, 20%, perhaps 30% or more? You know, what do you think actually that uh, you know, reduction in uh, default rate could be? Well, let's have a look at uh, say examples to try and illustrate you know, what, what actually happened to some, uh, some real financial institutions. So if we look at um, some new loans that were granted in Jamaica in a financial institution, they weren't quite sure about what the benefits they might uh, achieve. So what they did was they uh, took credit reports for some uh, customers when they applied for new loans and didn't take for some others. So they actually they had a tested control group. And the table shows the, uh, the improvements. So what they saw was where a credit report was taken, compared to where a credit report wasn't taken, a 45% reduction in default rate on those new consumer loans, consumer and SME loans. So really a, a massive reduction in the default rate. We go uh, uh, in a different direction now, we go to Ukraine in the uh, about 2009. Here we have a finance institution and we can see the graph shows the default rate of uh, new loans on a month by month basis for the, the month of application. And we can see here that after the uh, introduction of the uh, Credit Bureau in March 2009, we see quite rapidly the falling default rates of, the default rate of those new loans. And overall it goes from 8% down to, to 2%. So a reduction of 80% in this particular case. I think that's quite a rarity to see that level of uh, reduction. Uh, there was particularly a lot of fraud going on. But you know, really emphasize having an independent way of evaluating loans really makes a complete difference in terms of uh, consumer lending, unsecured consumer lending. Final case is, is, is it looks at the data a slightly different way. So this is in uh, Tanzania in, uh, recently, so we've been to the West Indies, we've been to the uh, into post-Soviet uh, Ukraine, and now we're going to Africa. And here we looked at loans that were given to individuals who would had a previous uh, default. So unaware that there was a previous default at the time because the credit bureau wasn't in place, then a loan was provided. And subsequently, those new loans, 55% of them went to default. So really, knowing that historic, um, his, that historic performance makes such a big difference. So three examples in three different environments really showing the, the potential improvements. So, we, 
I have, I've made my predictions. We see the four predictions that are going to happen to the market. We see the underlying uh, drivers in terms of individual lenders and changing default rates and potentially the efficiency. So what, what, what in my experience, typically are financial institutions doing in that period of pre-credit bureau and post-credit bureau? And perhaps what should they be doing is, is the real thing. So first let's look at what frequently happens. So I've put together an emotional timeline that, of uh, financial institutions um, from, from my experience. So when they're aware that there's perhaps a credit bureau going to be introduced, what we often see is that you know, they object to it. They're worried it's something new, is it the right thing, what's going to happen to my data, security, etc. But rather than trying to, to, to join in and, and understand and improve things, frequently they're, they're stepping away and trying to block things. Then what happens is, okay, it's going to happen. So they're becoming accepting, but perhaps um, a little bit passively accepting that the credit bureau is going to happen. And as they start to, you know, to extract some data and, and uh, populate the credit bureau, they're doing so, but perhaps not with the enthusiasm and, and really thinking about what are going to be the effects. Initially, okay, you know, it's there, how can we start using it? They start to think about it, and they start using the credit bureau, but perhaps you not know, really planning fully what the way they should be using it, perhaps a little bit tentatively taking credit reports here and there. And then perhaps you know, they start to see one or two lenders uh, you know, advancing, they might even see some of their own results, and they start to see the type of results we saw previously, reductions in, de in default rate, perhaps some improvements in efficiency. It's like, hey, perhaps you know, there's some, something in this credit bureau business. You know, they start to realize that, uh, you know, to think about how they should be using it more effectively. And then perhaps they start seeing some competitors coming in. Perhaps it's not after three years, it's perhaps might be after five years. But they start thinking, hey, you know, we're really going to have to move. We're going to have to strategically change our direction, bring in unsecured lending. But often it's starting to become a little bit late then, and they've lost market share to the competitors. So perhaps let's think about, ideally, what should be happening in those first uh, few years in terms of planning and uh, preparing for the credit bureau. So let's go back to that same timeline and think actually, what should be the ideal processes that the financial institutions are going through so really they're going to get maximum benefits from these changes to the marketplace. So the initial thing is really starting to think from a highest level, the strategic planning. Okay, things are going to change, what do we have to put in place? What do we have to do in terms of getting data, changing credit processes, thinking about new products? There's some uh, you know, operational aspects that, that need to happen in terms of in the short term, extracting data, making sure the quality of data is, is as good as it can be, and really uh, moving forward. Then we need to start thinking actually, next year the credit bureau is going to start uh, operational, how are we actually going to start using it within our day-to-day um, -day environment in terms of the new applications, reviews of existing customers, limit increases, all those different aspects where the credit bureau will actually be central to our future decision making. And then once the credit bureau is in place and the data is starting to uh, you know, uh, improve and uh, have a full population of data, in, across the marketplace, then it's the time really to think perhaps you know, we need to uh, start planning and putting the steps for automation, perhaps we need to either change our recruitment, change our personnel, perhaps we need to put our RFP out to make sure that we have an automated system, scorecards, etc. and start to think about perhaps we need to change our product offering, you know, so it's not just a risk aspect, it's really cross-functional areas you know, changing the marketing sales, designing new products, changing the operational processes, centralizing automation, um, fast, uh, more efficient processing, and also uh, changing the risk function to have people who can understand scoring and automation. So that planning was really uh, you know, getting into place, and we get started to the place into the moment where we're actually going to change our products, we're going to actually go live with the new automation processes, and hopefully you're going to be one of the first to actually achieve this and get the greatest benefits and start expanding your market share.
And then you're in a, in a, the ideal world, you can start to get back on your sun lounger and really enjoy the benefits of being the first, gaining great market share, and then really thinking on to the next stage. So that's really where the, the lender should be at. It's really from knowing that there's going to be the market change, making uh, the strategic vision to see where uh, what needs to be put in place and when to actually achieve greatest benefit. So in that way, once we get the efficiency saving, once we receive, you know, know that the default rates are going to fall, once we think about changing products, we can really anticipate that that is, will affect the four uh, aspects of the market, the product range, the volumes, the competition, and the uneven growth. And if you have anticipated, if you've got your strategic roadmap in place, then you can be one of the financial institutions that actually can achieve the benefits. Thank you, and hopefully you found the uh, presentation interesting and useful.